This is Think Tech Hawaii. Community matters here. Aloha and welcome to Eyes on Hawaii on Think Tech Hawaii. I'm your host, Carol Cox. Today my guests are Dennis and Sandra Park. We will be talking about the recent renaming of a park in Hawaii Kai in honor of Sandra's great-grandfather, Mr. Joe Lukella, Konohiki, caretaker of the fishing and portions of Mauna Loa Bay. And uh, before I get started, this is a very beautiful place, Mauna Loa, Mauna Loa Bay. Uh, many fish ponds are found in that area up and down the coast there, and uh, Sandra was fortunate to be part of that system, and she's told me quite a bit about it, and I'm going to share with you and let her tell you in greater details what this is about. Uh, it was very moving. On Saturday, the, uh, the, the blessing for this park was done. So, Sandra, thank you for joining me. Thank you, Carol. Dennis, thank you for thank coming you. in. Hello. Thank you. All right. Thank you very much. So, uh, introduce yourself, if you would, and then tell us about the konohiki, the process, the fishing, the caretaking of the fish, and, and the sad part of it, the absence of the masses of millions of fish okay. that would gather there that your grandfather managed. My, uh, it actually, uh, my, it's my great-grandfather. Great um, I was fortunate enough to grow up at my tutu's house it, right before the, right after the bridge, the second bridge of Manuloa Bay. Uh, as Konohiki, his responsibility was to um, take care of the fish pond mm -hmm. and um, his kuleana, which is he was in charge of all of Manuloa Bay all the way around to Makapu, you know. And um, as being Konohiki, you are uh, you are caretaker and owner from mountain to ocean, including everything in the ocean, mm -hmm. you know. Is this, would this be considered an ahupua? Yes, yes. And he was yeah. the Konohiki of that? Of that ahupua. And how did he have that bestowed on him or um, granted to the, him? The ali'i, or the king, they actually appoint you to, they tell you this is what your responsibility is. So he like you passed don't, in 1966, was yes. born in 18, 1879. So he yeah. then uh, at some point became uh, appointed as a konohiki. Yeah, he was konohiki for... 50 years, over 50 years, mm -hmm. yeah. And where did he stay in, in this area? Uh, of, we call it Hawaii Kai now. It has gone through so many changes. But where did he stay? And we have some pictures that we're going to show, if you could describe that and, and tell us where his house was or his folly. Okay. Um, it was, when I was growing up, it wasn't called Hawaii Kai. There was no such thing as Hawaii Kai. It was Kuli O'o. That's all we knew where my tutu lived was Kuli O'o, mm -hmm. yeah. And uh, his home was right, right after the bridge, you know, uh, where it was uh, Kuapa Pond, yeah, mm -hmm. was right directly in the back of his home, yeah. Mm -hmm. And um, so if you go to um, my tutu's beach park, yeah, you're going to be able to see remnants of his pier, yeah, fishing, the, the boat pier mm -hmm. that had his sandpans attached to it, you know. And um, you could actually, it's from the pier and you, it was like that corner of, mm -hmm. of the, we called it the river, yeah. Right now it's called a marina, yeah. And, but, and we have some pictures showing right now. Uh, this is, you can see the pilings there, a portion of them up top yes. of the picture. Yeah. Can you explain that a it's, little bit? It's actually right at the corner of where those pilings are, um, which really shouldn't be there because the erosion of, the, of that river or that marina, um, th they're doing damage by having that pilings on the side of that mm -hmm. um, marina. Mm -hmm. But his home was right in that corner, okay. all the way to the pier, whether you saw the remnants. Mm -hmm. Now there's a picture of the park, actually, how it's laid out along the coast there. And uh, 
What was it or earlier named? What was the name of the park? You know? uh, we just knew it as um, Kulio'o, but it, it was, they didn't even look like that. This mm -hmm. was dredged because when we looked from when, when we were at our tutu's house, it was just um, core trees, core bushes. It was just completely um, like it didn't have any, it had the coastline, but it didn't have any harbor or, mm -hmm. or you know, um, beach park or anything. It was just flat land and core bushes mm -hmm. and calvary trees. That was now, it. This, um, we say he took care of the fishing, but also there were other things like limu or seaweed, yeah. as we say yeah. on the mainland. How did that go and what a number of types of ogo or seaweeds or, were there found there, correct? Yeah. We, um, right alongside of his home, where the marina is, there was choke limo over there, mm -hmm. you know. Um, but as a, as a young child, I wasn't allowed to pick the limo, you know, because if you get damaged the coral, you, you got you to gotta know how to pick the limo. But it Very was, carefully. It, yes, yes. Yeah. And you not know, but pulling it not out pulling it and damaging the the coral, you know. Um, so my parents and my older cousins was allowed to to pick the limo, but I my my growing up there, I was more like playing in mm -hmm. the water and you know. What type of uh, limo were found there? Uh, um, limo collar, limo. No, it was just a regular. Um, brown limo. It wasn't the green limo. We just called it limo, you know, but it was the brown limo that you you can eat um, raw mm -hmm. and you put them in poke, you know. Yeah, now you're using a couple of terms there. The people on the mainland or in other places yeah. will recognize that. Oh, well, poke, poke is raw fish, okay. cut in cubes, mm -hmm. yeah, with Hawaiian salt. And what's and the limo? Tutu. Tutu is grandmother or grandfather. Okay. Yeah. And then there's that famous word, choke. What? Choke. <laughs> choke means um, plentiful. Yeah. Lots. You know. Yeah, lots. You know. Which we like, don't have anymore. No, we don't have it. Yeah. There's no limo in there. In fact, there's um, invasive um, seaweed. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But that's not the limo that we used to pick and eat. So, Dennis, yes. now you, you're on this bandwagon with us, and, and I, I was overjoyed because I'm seeing so much of Hawaii disappear. And, and just, it's no big deal to some people, but seeing a Hawaiian being recognized for, we'll say that's a little preserving of the, a piece of Hawaiian culture, at least, to just that simple naming of that park after him or dedicating. What about you? We need to um, <clears throat> share <clears throat> the information and how he lived his life and how he managed the resources. I mean, he's gone. There's changes now, commercial changes, uh, development. But what we need to do as Levaya is pass on the knowledge to the younger generation. And hopefully they can turn things around one by one and make a difference and, and be able to adapt and change what is happening now. To preserve it. So the right. word Leviah, fisherman. <clears throat> it's more than a fisherman. Yeah, Leviah is, in general term. is a fisherman with respect All right. for others and for mm -hmm. the environment and its relationship to the ocean and the land. Mm -hmm. And we see some decline now. I was listening to the presentation as being talked about at that gathering at the blessing mm -hmm. and what i observed was the, it was rather sad because you're right there and you hear the m thousands and thousands of mullet turkey turning the water black mm -hmm. of the akule turning the water black and moving and uh i actually sorry carol but i actually experienced that firsthand um i'm not sure what age i was but I remember being at my tutu's house, right in that, what we called the river, yeah? Um, and you would, I, you just standing right in the water, and 
just all this fish come right between your legs and, Darn and they, just, they just you know and it it's like um so much so much movement in the water you know and and you actually you're you're laughing inside because they're like whacking your leg they're so mm -hmm. so Bonking much you. yeah you know mm -hmm. and they they just like rushing you know so now they're there in these large numbers what is it that your great great grandfather w would do in the he, ma um, effort of managing them um well when the fish would come to the river he would actually open up the gate and allow the the fish to go into the ponds yeah mm -hmm. you know and then he would make sure that when they were finished spawning and growing of whatever size they supposed to be then he would allow the fish he would open up the gates and let the, the fish um, come out into the ocean and, you know? and some say they found their way back to this quote river, river. because they could smell the water yeah. or taste the yeah. water the, similar yeah. to the salmon or any migratory yeah. fish or other species, yeah. uh, aquatic species. And, and standing there and looking out, and it seemed to be more boats, more jet skis than fish. More commercial activity. Yeah. And, and this likely to have an impact because mullet are quite active on top of the water for spawning and mating activities. And then yet, this increase of activity such as this yeah you saw saturday how much activity there was mm -hmm. you know uh, we've been going there for the last three weekends um trying to prepare for the blessing and everything and we had saw so much so much activity you know with jet skis and and um boats coming in and out of the marina and you could actually when you go and touch the water, you can feel all that, that oil and, and that pollution. Does not, and that is not good for spawning fish or No, eggs. it's not good for well, anything. No. <laughs> <laughs> it's not good for anything. I'm, we I'm, we didn't even let our, our grandkids in the water. I'm laughing to keep from crying because it, it is a painful thought, to you be know, very honest with there's, you. There still are fish. Mm -hmm. You don't see them because mm -hmm. there's activity in the areas where they want to come. You know, so before they used to make certain areas close seasons mm -hmm. because they knew when the fish would spawn and when they would come. Those things are still happening, but there's more activity in these areas. So the fish, the fish now got to find somewhere else to go. But we need to, we need to manage like they used to manage, mm -hmm. you know, in close areas to allow them to come in and spawn. Mm -hmm. Maybe not for the whole time, but for the seasons. Well, we're coming up on a break, but we'll, when we come back, we'll talk about uh, the flags and the f setting the yeah. torches, how if they were used or incorporated in managing and, and signaling to other fishermen uh, when the fish were in and when they were not and what have you. We'll take a break. This is Eyes on Hawaii, Think Tech Hawaii. I'm your host, Carol Cox. We'll be right back. For every game day, assign a designated driver. Living in this crazy world, so caught up in the confusion, nothing is making sense for me and you. Maybe we can find a way, there's got to be solution, how to make a brighter day. Welcome back to Eyes on Hawaii on Think Tech Hawaii. I'm your host, Carol Cox. Today, my guests are Dennis and Sandra Park. We're talking about the recent renaming of a park in Hawaii Kai in honor of Sandra's great-grandfather. 
Mr. Joe Lucello. So thank you again for joining me. Thank you, Carol. Sandra thank and you. Dennis. Now, we were talking about your great-grandfather and him serving as a Konohiki and in the area of uh, Kulio'o to Makapu'u. There were some activities going on. He incorporated torches and flags of some sort to signal to other fishermen when, when, when the fish were in. Or yeah. Can you explain that process and share with us? He would actually um, light uh, fires in the mountain to, to I guess, um, signal when the boats could come in to to catch the fish. Mm -hmm. Yeah, to to lay nets for the fish. But he would also when it wasn't time for for the fishing. Yeah, um, he would have white flags in the bay, saying that this is this it's closed. It's closed season. Yeah, oh, it was his okay. way of saying. This is closed season, and um, there are a lot of times that he would actually um, confront the poachers because even back then they had, you know, he had problems with um, people trying to, or people not obeying what they supposed, you mm -hmm. know, what they. And was he doing. empowered with any law enforcement authority, or was he? Who did he call on to punish these people? that would be found to be violating? He did it himself. He actually had a badge. Yeah. He would found a badge. Yeah. He, he did wore. it himself. Mm -hmm. Yeah, when you are, um, you it, when you are the Konohiki, it's as if that is, you own that, that bay. And you, and you own that fish. And you owe that ownership or authority to the people, the lead that are pointing. You. Yes. Because you're carrying out their wishes. Yes. Perpetuating, yeah. and his and uh, Ali'i's wishes was for him to take fish to the downtown market to feed the people of Hawaii, and my tutu also fed a lot of families in the community of Kulio'o and Waimanalo, and um, I every day I'm hearing more and more stories about my mm -hmm. tutu. Now I did hear a bit of discussion out there where uh, he would give fish to some and they would in turn give him other things. Yeah. Like and um create barter. Like, not bartering, just Yeah, it was just um it was, it was just a Hawaiian way of, you know, like if he wants rice, then he go and give limo, you know? Mm -hmm. He if he gives fish, then you get manoa lettuce, you know, you get uh fruits or or vegetables, you know. So he he was actually paid by when he sold fish or bartered fish. Yes, and and that, um, it, it wasn't a lot, you know, as much fish as he caught, it wasn't a lot, a lot of money. Mm -hmm. But of course, back then, he really didn't need a did whole you lot. Ever, did you ever see the drying racks, or did he ever have any racks where he was drying the kulu, kuli or pelu? No, no. no. Um, he actually had a, a fishing shack right before the pier mm. and we weren't allowed to go in there but we used to we were we were kind of kalohe you, you ever, did you ever s snatch a, a opelu out no you we, can tell us now yeah, he's not around no, <laughs> 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 no. <laughs> um but there were it, the the shack had nothing but um fishing nets yeah drying it was just it was made out of linen Mm -hmm. you know like mm -hmm. cord and um it wasn't suji like now you know monofilament but, yeah it was all uh like cord you know but mm -hmm. it was it, there was a lot of net in mm -hmm. the in the fishing shack now th there's some people if they're interested if they bother there's a um we call it marker it's a rock or a stone sitting in the water that delineates or shows the boundary the bar, of his. Yes. And what is that rock called? Lucella's rock. Um, yeah. Lucella's marker. And that's coming into? Mauna Loa Bay, where well, it's 20, about 20 maybe yards from the shoreline. Mm -hmm. And if you're looking, if you're in Mauna Loa Bay, it's on your right, right past the Kanuhalau. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
uh, you can just you can see it sticking out of the water. That's that big holiva that the, where the river yeah. runs through. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, how many uh, great grandkids or that does he have that spun from Mr. Lopello? I have no idea. I did not count, but um, at our blessing, mm -hmm. they were there were seventy, so maybe seventy three of us. That was actually Lucella, you know. Mm -hmm. Now we're showing a picture of some of the, the gathering, some of the family members yes. there, and all of these—not all of them, but many of them—are relatives or descendants of Joe Lucella. Yes, mm -hmm. yes. And and, and then, of course, um, there's a lot of people from the community, mm -hmm. you know, but the majority is um, the Lucella, mm -hmm. Ohana. Now. Dennis, with with all the fishing and all, do you think we could incorporate or implement such a practice nowadays? Get away from the, or is it is it possible that we incorporate some practices of management like Mr. Lakello did to try to bring back the fish? Is yes, we can. Um, cold seasons. We have some cold seasons. The winter time is three months closed for the spawning of the uh, mullet. Um, summertime is closed for Moy. So we, we need to, fishermen and the community and everybody needs to be aware of just taking what we need and trying to perpetuate the, take care of the fish when they're trying to reproduce so that we can perpetuate more. And there's areas, like I said, maybe that we should be looking at mm -hmm. because there were fish ponds all around, but um, Tutuman had the, one of the largest in all of Polynesia, and that was, you know, the fish travel. They know where they're going. We need to know where they're going mm -hmm. and how to take care of them. And protect them wherever they are. Here right. they're spawning, so we need to set up protection there, limit the number of take and catch, limit the activities that they're exposed to, motors and oils and runoff mm -hmm. from right. lawns and new buildings and uh, building construction sites and just and run off from the streets. Yes. That is builds a very toxic environment for fish like mullet or any fish that is spawning. Sure, with all the development, the water just runs right into the ocean. Mm -hmm. So, we need so to it's going to take a bigger effort on everybody's part to include government, private entities that would start to work together and get this. But, but it starts from us. Yeah. It, you know, as my tutu was Konehiki. We also take on that responsibility of, you know, um, being Konehiki, even though we're, we're not appointed by the Ali'i. Mm -hmm. This is our responsibility to teach our children, and they teach their children, you know, mm -hmm. how to take care, you know, of the ocean and, and everything around us, you know. Before I uh, get off air here with this, but uh, there were some important people that provided you assistance in getting this done and uh, who were there I think uh, the and, city councilman and uh, if you would uh, yeah I, uh, well Ernie Martin had helped us mm -hmm. and Trevor city councilman yeah, city, uh, city councilman Ernie Martin mm -hmm. and Trevor Ozawa he's council um, for Hawaii Kai mm -hmm. and uh, Laura Thielen she's a senator for Hawaii Kai and Waimanalo and also Anne Marie Kirk Mm -hmm. She was a big help with with um, the renaming of the of my Tutuman's Park. Yeah. So, and and here's a shot of uh, Laura Thielen, yeah. Senator Laura Thielen, and Anne Marie Kirk on the left there. Yes, and Anne Marie Kirk is with uh, Mauna Loa .net. Mm -hmm. and there's also Chris Kramer. That's my uncle, who's named Joe Lucella the third. That is Joe Lucella, your great grandfather's son my grandfather's son right. yeah my mm -hmm. grandfather's son well my my mom's grand okay. my mom's <laughs> wait no i'm all confused no, yeah. he's my mom's brother okay yeah, yeah. and this and is that's my auntie caroline lee and she is um my great grandfather's granddaughter that's how i should say it yeah, well, we're coming down to the last minute. If you would, tell us about the Pohaku and the, the monument that is going to be placed in, and real quick, if you would. Uh, we are actually um, 
in the process of um, having the city, well, we're having the city uh, move the, we're having a volunteer move the Kohaku to the park. Mm -hmm. And then we need the city to place it where, where we want the Kohaku. Mm -hmm. And we also are in the process of um, putting up a plaque. Yeah, and that will be coming in the near future. Yes, I and hope then, very near future. If people want more information to contact you, could you give your email address and yes. contact real quick? Ruth? My email address is lavaya49 at gmail.com. And you actually could call me on my phone, 808-220-8095. Um, Mm -hmm. And um, I also wanted to thank Chris Kramer. Oh, yeah, yeah, he's yeah, because Chris Kramer and Anne Marie were instrumental, instrumental in, in getting All the this. Way. Yeah, from, from, the the, from the beginning. Okay, well, thank you. Thank you for joining me today on Eyes on Hawaii on Think Tech Hawaii. If you're interested in getting on our mailing list, go to thinktechhawaii.com. Thank you for joining me today on our Eyes on Hawaii on the Think Tech Hawaii. Thanks to Jay Fidel, our executive director, and our technical support team, Robert McLean, Ray Sangalang, and Nick Sexton. I'll see you again in two weeks. I'm Carol Cox. Aloha.